You're in the middle of uh, the first desert session, Lawn Friend Energize, uh, my podcast in its 40th week, a uh, new beginning here. Uh, where I, I can't tell you what's coming because I, you know I don't have a script to my life and I don't have a script to my show, but uh, Jeff Young is here and Sherry is here, and hey, maybe now would be a good time to play that tune. We got you a, cut we a track got a together. Tune. We got a new tune. Set it up. Set it up, and, and we'll uh, play it. It's kind of a swampy, hard rock kind of affair. Don't we got tell us couple, what kind of a song it is. We got a couple players. How did it come might, together? I locked myself in the bedroom and wrote it. That's I it. tune my guitar down real low, like that, a step down, and then I tune the E string even lower, another it. step down. So it's in drop C tuning, so it sounds real swampy. Swampy. And it's kind of sexy lyric. Swampy in the middle of the desert. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a swampy desert rock. Now, did you write the lyrics for Sherry? They were written. They were written. I only changed a couple words, and... Uh, it was challenging for me because I'm so used to singing covers. It was the first time that, you know, I had to dig deep within and thank God I, I got to follow some footsteps of another singer of his, but I still made some changes that suited my vocals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was challenging and, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. Who I plays on the track? Couple players that- uh, some, some old friends from yeah, the Yeah, some old era, friends, huh? couple players that we like. Okay. James Lomenzo, some fan, friends out there might be familiar with his work as far back as White Lion. I went to, I went to Tokyo with White Lion in 1989. James Great. Lomenzo will remember us walking around the Harunjuku <laughs> Festival and, and, and buying cheap things from people and then going to, the, to, the, to that bar where all the models hung out at. What was that called? What was that called, that bar in the alley near the Rapungi Prince Hotel? James Lomenzo, I haven't seen him forever, but... He played Megadeth. Mm -hmm. Later Zach, version. Black, Black, Label, Black Society. Label Society. But this is what's kind of cool about the track. It's, I'm not sure, so I can't say, but I'm pretty sure it's the first time two Megadeth members from bookend eras, myself in the late 80s era and James Lomenzo some years later, and he actually was in the band longer than me, a couple albums, two, three albums. Have, it's the first time two Megadeth members have played on a... Another track together outside the okay, band. Okay, so that, that's, so that's kind an of event. historic. That's an event. We got a drummer on this track that we quite fancy. His name's Jeff Bowders. He played with uh, guitar shred chap Paul Gilbert, who folks know from Mr. Big. I love Paul Gilbert. He plays. Well, oh, with, Le Leah Burlington, the rock and roll massage therapist, has my Mr. Big platinum record hanging in her apartment. She just took some pictures of us on New Year's Eve. That's Leah. Yeah, yeah. there's we another. There, there's another. There's another synchronicity. Okay. It's all synchronicity. Okay, go on. Jeff also played with Justin Derrico, who's Pink's curly hair guitar player. They did an Australian tour together, but wait, even, did he do the Pink tour where she does a Bohemian Rhapsody? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, curly her Bohemian guitar. Rhapsody is so ridiculously fucking amazing. I like Pink. I do too. Here's a little fact where Jeff Bowders also played. Ghost, he's the ghost drummer on the most recent Puddle of Mud album. That's very good. So you assembled ghost these drummer. players and you went to a studio to cut recorded it. Recorded it in L.A. old school to, just for our listeners that right. are a little bit younger, there was a recording format way back in the day called Analog Recording, <laughs> where we recorded on two-inch two inch tapes Shut and up, big giant tape. reels. Two-inch, we did it two-inch right reel on. reel. So all the music was done carved mm -hmm. to re and then we finished we did her vocals here at amazing studio called vegas view shout out to bobby ferrari hey bobby ferrari bobby. amazing engineer here track sherry's vocals and also my guitar solo which i did on a gibson sg i got to thank gibson guitars for loaning me that axe very good very solo good here what are you playing these days i'm playing gibson's and i'm playing george lynch is building me a flying v like a old he, he's got a guitar company, MrScaryGuitars.com. He's been building guitars. The cat's probably one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever talked to about guitars and amps and what's inside amps. And yeah. he's just a freak. He, I had him on my show from the Venetian. We talked two hours on the interview, and I, he walked me down the valet and said, oh, we forgot to talk about gear. Mm -hmm. And we stood there talking for another two hours. Amazing cat. You, know, he, you might know he's doing a documentary on Native American, the whole plight, and, and trying to write the history well, here's, of all that. Here's my George Lynch synchronicity. 
Shortly before I went to the Integratron in Joshua Tree with my friend Dan Seawick, who took me out to the desert to go and have my sound, get sound bathed, he sent me a couple YouTube clips, and one of them is George Lynch walking around this, this wooden, it's, it's built in the middle, of the, it's, it's in Joshua Tree, and it's supposedly designed by a physicist with guidance from extraterrestrial in, uh, architects. And it is the perfectly, acoustically perfect dome. It's a mind blow being in there. And, I, and there's a YouTube clip of George Lynch playing his guitar inside that dome. Amazing. See how it's all yeah, connected, such a man? cool cat. I think I've seen that clip. Yeah. So I'm playing Mr. Scary Guitars, Proud Endorser. Very and good. And he's building, he builds them by hand, and they're all distressed looking. Looks sure. like he just pulled it out of Red Rock and just started <laughs> playing them. Yeah. We're making like an old 58, like Albert King kind of V, but all distressed. Like Jack White, and it might so get watch loud. My building his guitar out of yeah. a Coke bottle and wire. Yeah. <laughs> watch my <laughs> Facebook at ballsdeepenrock.com, and you'll see the building of the guitar. I play Gibsons, too. And okay. And keep it simple, not a bunch of All tracks. right. Well, keep guess what? Real. We're going to play this song right now. We're introducing it. And it's called Come Closer. Come Closer. Lon Friend, Energize, the podcast. This is Jeff Young and Sherry.
Yeah. Okay. Nice plane. Nice pipes. I feel a nice chemistry, creative chemistry between you two. Oh, we gave it a go. She, thank he you. said between us three. Thank you, Pomeranian Lebowski. That's yeah. That's Wolfie. <laughs> he always has to get a word Wolfie. in. That was Jeff Young and Sherry, mm -hmm. and that was a global debut. And I'm honored to be debuting stuff again. It's our pleasure. What do you be remember? What do you remember about in my darkest hour? Well, because it was the first solo that I laid on the record, they had about two weeks to finish the album because they had tour dates. There was a Christmas on Earth festival in the UK that they had to get to. And uh, Mustaine called me up. I, I remember I was probably about three, four months away from just giving it up. Even though I'd only been there four years in LA, I was just getting so frustrated with the musicians and how flaky everybody is and opportunistic and yada, yada, yada. Came home from a radio, a rodeo, not a radio show, but a rodeo show to a message from Mustaine, he wanted to meet with me. I was giving guitar lessons to the guitarist they had hired to replace Chris Poland after Peace Sells. And he gave me about 60 seconds of In My Darkest Hour. Not the whole song, I didn't hear the vocals. I heard like about 20 seconds up to the solo and maybe 10 seconds after he says, we want a solo here, All right? So I went home overnight and improvised over the changes and I went in the next day and I remember I turned my back to the mixing board to everyone in my room and I just faced the back wall and I just improvised that solo and the engineer was Paul Lanny who also did an amazing album Strength for Enough's Enough I love that album Chips uh, Enough yeah hello my brother Merry Christmas to you <laughs> he called me Christmas <laughs> and he he high-fived me after I laid the song because he had done the, the Alcatraz album after Ingve left and Steve Vai replaced him. And he said, I haven't had this mu much fun working with a guitar player since Steve Vai on the Alcatraz album. So I felt good about that. Yeah. And probably the second, just the fact that it was my first solo and it was pretty much improvised with not much notice. The band never rehearsed together or any of that kind of jazz. And, uh, what kind of led up to us meeting the Metal Years, the decline of Western civilization, Metal Years movie yep. that Penelope Spiris yep. directed yep. right before she did Wayne's World. Uh, that was my first time on stage ever playing with Megadeth at the country club. Tom Mastry announced it on KNAC. And what shirt was Dave wearing on stage? A Rip Magazine shirt. High five, Lon Friend. Now get yep. this. Ton announced it in the fun uh, synchronicity again because we talked about Ton and Kara Mastery was yeah. on the show with you yeah. on my show yeah, from Los sister. Angeles. Yeah. She announced on KNAC, Megadeth is doing a show at the Country Club. Yeah. It's a filming. It's da 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 da. We thought six, seven, eight hundred people, six thousand people showed up. Yeah. They were turning people away, and it yeah. was as yeah. you see in the movie, it was out of hand. Well, uh, Pen Penelope and Dave, and Dave show up at my office that afternoon. I get, uh, they call me from, from the front desk. Help you, Spheres, Dave Mustaine are here. I said, okay, come back. We're going to shoot the uh, concert footage for the film at the Country Club. Would you like to come? I go, I, I can't come. I, I got I to run a magazine. But I go, can I give you something, Dave? He goes, sure, Lon, you can give me anything. I opened up my credenza where I kept all my T-shirts, and I pulled out a ripped shirt with the red logo. I said, would you wear this on stage? He goes, give me the shirt. I say, you, you, you wear it? He goes, give me the shirt. <laughs> and months later at the premiere. At the he, Cinerama at Dome. At the Cinerama Dome with all the other magazines. I'm there with my staff staring at a huge screen sh with the fucking shredder. And there's my logo. And that was probably one of the great moments. That might have been like what took Rip to the next level was that as far as w the acceptability and the integrity that we had, where we weren't that old a mag. We were a year, two, two years old. And here's a major motion picture by a filmmaker who was, like she went out to great, huge Wayne's World. But this was, it was such a golden thing. And I just felt so humble and wow. He fucking wore it because I, I was never sure. You know, it's not like we had communication after that. <clears throat> wow. 
And that's such a punishing segment, too. It's just so good. The way it was shot. It was really great. Did you, did you have years of uh, bad blood with Mustaine? Did you communicate over the last many years? You could say bad blood. Yeah. Where are you at now with them? Well, there, w- there was a recent Thanksgiving, what we're calling a Thanksgiving miracle. Okay. Uh, it, it took place on Twitter. Right. And uh, well, it, Dave, sounds, it doesn't Dave, sound odd that uh, you're, you're yeah. about to say this metal dude's tweeting. Yeah. yeah. But, but on Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, yeah. he started tweeting all kinds of things he was thankful for. Right. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. It was a series of like 20, 30 tweets that he did. And Putting out some, positive yeah, messages. Some fan sent it to me. Uh, check out what Dave Mustaine just tweeted about you. And it said, I'm thankful for Jeff Young and his tremendous playing on So Far So Good So What. And that so, must have made you feel pretty fucking good, huh? He yeah, was, was really happy. He was really, really happy. He's like, Sherry, look what a fan just tweeted me. And, and I was like, come on, respond back, respond back. So, like, I, so I tweeted back to him that that was a lovely, yeah, a lovely gesture and wished him and his family a uh, happy holiday season. 